As a content creator, I have a lot of data. All of the video footage, thumbnails, audio files, contracts, and everything else associated with this channel all need to be safely stored for later access. On top of that, I also don't like to use subscription services whenever I can avoid them. Things like Netflix, Hulu, and even Google Drive are services that I want to avoid if I can. So I need something that not only can store all my files for work with safe redundancy, but also be a place for personal use like Plex, photo backup, Docker containers, and even spin up the occasional Palworld server. So for me, the obvious way to answer all these issues is to simply build a home server. But I don't want a super loud, super large, or super power hungry home server. And I think I've found the perfect solution to build out the perfect home lab of my dreams, and even while on a budget. So let's go over what I'm working with here and how I intend to use it right after this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck or any other PC for that matter, you're going to need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way. Thanks to SCD Key. Now I know most of my viewers are mostly into gaming, so I'll give a quick 30 second overview of what even a home server is. To put it simply, a home server is what you make of it. It's generally another computer that sits on your network, usually headless, that can be used to do a multitude of services for you, such as store files, run game servers, host websites, basically anything that your main computer could do, but it's offloaded to another device so your main device isn't bogged down or running 24 seven. Longtime viewers of the channel might remember that the very first video on this channel was me building out my home server using some used budget components but a lot has changed since then, and I've got some big plans for my home network now. Now, before we start, I feel like I should say I am not an expert at any of this. I'm just a guy who needs a home server and sharing my journey, even all of my mistakes, with all of you. Now, for the server, the main usage is going to be the NAS portion. Storing files for this channel so I can access them throughout the network is my number one concern, and it's the main way I'll be using it. I also have some media content I'd like to have access to via Plex, which will be running in a Docker container. On top of that, I sometimes host the occasional game server for things like Minecraft or Palworld, and I do like to spin up the occasional virtual machine to use as a playground for any software or Linux distros. So my home server really is both for work and pleasure. In the future, I'd really like to run all my security cameras to my home server, as well as run Home Assistant to control any home automation from my house as well. That is all beyond the scope of today's video. So looking at my use case, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how little processing power I need to make all of this happen. In the gaming and video editing world, we get so used to modern i7 processors and huge GPUs, but all of the stuff I need is very easy to run on old, low-powered processors. Now I'm going to be going with something a little more modern, mostly for the sake of power draw and efficiency, as I want my home server to be somewhat efficient and cool. So for the case, I wanted to get something rack mountable. I don't have a network rack at the moment, but I do have plans in the future for where it will eventually go, and so I want my home server to be ready. But I personally don't want like a full length 4U case. I, I want it to be relatively small, but still be able to hold a few drives. After a lot of going back and forth, I ultimately decided on this case from a company called Rack Choice on Amazon. It was surprisingly affordable and it had everything I wanted. It's only 2U, has support for up to micro ATX motherboard, can support full size ATX power supplies, and if you use an ITX motherboard, it can hold up to seven full-size hard drives. Now, I don't currently have four hard drives I'll be using in this, but I wanted to leave a little room to grow as my needs expand. It comes with four fans pre-installed to make sure everything stays nice and cool, but if these things turn out to be too loud or not cool enough, I might eventually replace them. Now, I do want to eventually use all those hard drive slots, so I'll be using an ITX motherboard with the case. Shout out to Wolfgang's channel for showing off this motherboard in a video last year because as I was watching it, I knew it was perfect for my use case. I was actually in China when I saw this video and I ordered the motherboard directly from Taobao at a discounted price. But the motherboard is still available on AliExpress these days. This is an ITX motherboard that has an integrated CPU and cooler built into it. And for me, it's almost the perfect DIY NAS motherboard. 
It comes with four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, which you can use as a built-in network switch, as well as two M.2 NVMe slots, six SATA ports, and has an internal USB port. This is the perfect amount for me, so I don't have to add any add-on cards for faster networking or more SATA ports or anything like that. It's all built in. The motherboard has only two slots for SODIMM RAM, but that's fine for me. Now the integrated CPU is the N5105, which is a relatively modern CPU released in early 2021 from the Intel Seller Online. Now this thing would be horrible for gaming, but for my home server, it's almost perfect. It supports H.265 video transcoding, hardware virtualization, and all the new encryption technologies, as well as being four cores and four threads. It's a 10 watt TDP chip, so it will run cool and quiet and help keep my home server more power efficient. It even comes with its own cooler, so saving money there as well. Now I know that sounds pretty weak, but I've actually been using this motherboard in my home server for the past nine months and I've never seen my CPU usage get above 50% which doesn't mean it's not powerful. It just means I have very low power requirements. So I don't wanna pay for more power when it would just be sitting there 99% of the time and probably increasing my idle power draw. I slipped in 16 gigs of DDR4 SODIMM laptop RAM into the motherboard, but if I ever find myself maxing out the memory with VMs and Docker containers, eventually I would probably upgrade this to 32 gigs. The Intel page states the CPU only supports up to 16 gigs, but people have tested it with 32 and even 64 gigs of memory without any issues. Now you've probably noticed that there is no room for a GPU in this build. Both the case and motherboard simply don't support it. That's for a good reason. I don't want one. While encoding some videos would benefit from having the power of a graphics card, I don't intend to have 10 4K streams running at the same time. There's pretty much only going to be one at a time, and most of my content is 1080p anyway. Using Intel's Quick Sync feature is more than enough for my use case. Adding a graphics card would just add unnecessary costs, heat, and power draw that I don't want to get involved in this. Which isn't to say that graphic cards are useless in home servers because they certainly have their place. I just don't really need or want one in mine at this time. Now this case does support standard ATX size power supplies, but I had an SFX1 I purchased last year for a different project that I decided to use instead. This is a 450 watt PSU from Raijin Tech, which is bronze rated and is pretty average on the efficiency scale, but it's good enough for the home server and shouldn't have any issues. Remember, we aren't powering hugely powerful CPUs and graphics cards in this thing. It's just a wimpy processor and a couple of hard drives. So you don't want to use a fire hazard PSU, but you don't need to worry too much about hitting the upper limits of your wattage output if you're just building a simple home server like this one. I couldn't find much information online about this power supply actually, and it seems like it's not available on Amazon anymore. But from what I could find, it's just a pretty standard PSU, and it's more on the budget end as far as SFX power supplies go. But when I went to install my SFX power supply, I realized this case doesn't have mounting holes for my smaller PSU, and I seemed to have misplaced the ATX adapter that came with it. So I installed this ATX power supply in the meantime, just to finish this video. But I've got that adapter on the way for the finalized build, and I will post that now. Now the only thing left in this build is the storage, and to start, I'm going to install two of these NVMe Gen 4 SSDs from Kingston. These are going to act as my cache drives, which is basically a buffer to have high-speed file transfers during the day. And then when I'm sleeping, the files are offloaded to the slow-spinning hard drives automatically. I use two of these running in a RAID configuration for redundancy, not only as my cache drive, but also as my high-speed NAS storage. So I generally upload my newest project to this drive, and I keep it there until I'm completely done with it. I do all the editing, make the thumbnail, everything while the project lives on this SSD. Then when I'm done with it, it will get offloaded to the hard drives. So while these may only give me one terabyte of storage at a time, they actually play a huge part of my server. It's also the location where all my Docker containers and virtual machines data lives. Now for the hard drives, I'm currently using four of these eight terabyte drives. Three of them are Enterprise from Seagate, and the oldest one is from HGST. Now in my array, one of them is being used as a parity drive, which means I have 24 terabytes of usable storage. Once that fills up, I can easily just throw in another 8TB hard drive in the mix and be on my way. Now why did I go with these drives specifically? Well, they were on sale. That's it. I've already been using them for a few years now without any issues, so I have no problem continuing to use them. I didn't buy them all at once. I bought one. Then when I needed another one, I bought another one. And so on. Now if you haven't figured it out yet, the operating system I'm using on my home server is Unraid. And how Unraid storage protection works is that you have a parity drive, which is unable to hold any raw data, as it were. But however large your parity drive is, that is the largest your largest drive can be. So since my parity drive is 8 terabytes, I cannot insert any hard drives into my system that exceed 8 terabytes. Now, if I want to change that in the future, 
I can always replace the parity drive. So let's say I replace the eight terabyte parity drive with a 12 terabyte drive, then that would allow me to add hard drives up to 12 terabytes in size. And I can always mix and match drives with Unraid as I see fit. Maybe have two 12 terabytes and two eight terabyte drives, it would be no problem. But there actually is an advantage to having smaller drives compared to having these huge 18 and 20 terabyte drives. And it's mostly because of downtime. If one of my hard drives fail, I need to remove it, put in a brand new one, and my parity drive would rebuild it from the ground up. But that takes time, time that none of those files can be used. So if rebuilding an eight terabyte hard drive takes, you know, 20 hours, for example, then rebuilding an 18 terabyte drive could take like three full days. And that's three days where I'm unable to work or access any of my files. That could be pretty drastic if I'm on a video deadline. There might be a time in the future where I have a need to have hard drives that exceed eight terabytes, but this is what I'm comfortable with at this time in terms of size, price, and time. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using Unraid for my home server, and the reason is simply because I like it. I'm not saying it's the best one out there, but I've tried a few different operating systems out there, and I really like Unraid because it was just easy to use, and there's a lot of support online for it. Unraid is so lightweight, you don't actually have to have a boot drive, as the entirety of the system is ran directly off a USB flash drive which is perfect because this means I don't have to have a flash drive sticking out the back of my server at all times. I can just use the internal USB port to house it and prevent any chance of knocking it out or something. All right, let's do a little build montage and then I'll tell you my future dream for this home server. So for now, this home server is going to live in this closet because I can't have it in the room where I shoot because the fan noises are annoying on camera. Luckily, this closet door only gets closed when I do shoot, so there's plenty of airflow getting in there. Eventually, I want a half-size network rack in this closet with all the ethernet around the house coming directly here. So I'd have a patch panel, network switch, home server, UPS, router, and possibly a few other devices I want to control my house and life. A home server is something that I've come to realize I really appreciate as it just offers so much utility to my life and actually saves me a lot of money in the long run. So if you're considering building your own home server, I, I think you should do it, but you don't need to build the one I did. Literally just use any old computer you have lying around and use it as a playground to test out any problems you wanna solve. As for me, I'll consider my home server problem solved. But if you thought this home server is even a little too big and loud for you and you want an even smaller one, you can check out this video here where I reviewed a mini PC that would absolutely crush it as a tiny and quiet home server. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.